should try to adopt a protective approach to our very valuable assets at all times, not just when at work. Some hazards are obvious. For instance, you wouldn't want to put your hands anywhere near this type of process. These, of course, are extremely hazardous and are required by law to be suitably guarded so that you are not able to place yourself anywhere near them. Nevertheless, be aware that this sort of hazard can amputate a finger or even, in some cases, a hand. Machinery that is forming or cutting strong materials like steel and other metals will not be stopped by a mere human hand. Another major area for hand hazards is, not surprisingly, when handling and moving materials. Some materials are sharp, or hot, or cold, or heavy. Others are toxic, radioactive, caustic, or acid. Remember, all that is wet is not necessarily water. Many hand injuries are inflicted when using hand tools. Very often, it's the other hand that gets the injury, not the one using the actual tool. In most cases, these are lacerations and contusions caused by a tool slipping from its intended path and meeting the other hand which is holding or supporting the workpiece. Then there are the careless, non-thinking injuries that are usually caused by fingers being squashed or crushed in doors, filing cabinets, drawers, or any contraption that folds up. Some nasty burns are received by touching a hot or cold surface because it looks to be at normal temperature. The ideal way to prevent such hazards from causing injuries is to eliminate the hazard altogether. If this can be done, then other precautions become redundant. However, this is not always possible. But in any case, the hazard should be identified and evaluated from a risk assessment and then minimized by the best means possible. Contact injuries such as burns, cuts and abrasions can be protected against by wearing suitable gloves. Remember that gloves are supplied in a variety of types that are manufactured to combat a specific hazard. Make sure you have the correct type of glove for the particular hazard you are facing. An interesting fact to keep at the forefront of your mind is that if personal protective equipment such as gloves are damaged, they will always fail to danger. That is, they will not protect you as they should do. So make sure that you look after them properly and they won't let you down. There are specialist gloves for general handling of materials with sharp edges and corners. There are also those that protect against extremes of heat and welding processes. Some are designed to give protection from electrical contact. These must be the correct type. Domestic rubber gloves, medical gloves, or plastic keep clean gloves are not suitable for this purpose. There are many gloves designed to protect against chemicals. You should be absolutely sure that the glove you are using gives adequate protection for the particular chemicals or substances you are handling. Gloves, mittens and gauntlets are of course the last line of defense. In ideal conditions, the hazard should have been engineered out before reaching the operative and thereby eliminating the need for personal protective equipment. However, there are occasions when wearing hand protection may lead to an unsafe condition and present a more serious hazard than the one being originally guarded against. This is